Hello and welcome to the Thursday, June 22nd, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. We have observed in the past that a number of YouTube pages that at least at one point had a significant number of subscribers were all of a sudden taken over by crypto coin scams. Most recently, one of the probably biggest creators on YouTube, Linus Tech Tips, was also the victim of a scam where a phishing email was used in order to break into their YouTube account and then replace it again with crypto coin scams. So with all that, uh, thanks to Kevin, a listener who forwarded us a spare phishing email that specifically targeted creators like that. In this particular example, the attacker is impersonating NordVPN. You probably noticed a lot of YouTube creators are being sponsored by VPN providers. So receiving an email from NordVPN offering a sponsorship deal may sound uh, something plausible. And they did a decent job in impersonating NordVPN. They even went as far as registering a domain, nordvpn-media.com. And the recipient of the email is then enticed into downloading a RAR file that turns out, of course, to be malware. And if the victim installs the malware, well, apparently it's an info stealer. So that could then be used to, for example, exfiltrate passwords or other credentials being used by the victim. There is some evidence that suggests that the attacker here is a Russian based on some Russian text snippets uh, being used in email and also services like mail.ru uh, being used uh, by this particular attacker. And for more details, Wei Ching did a great job analyzing this particular email and walking you through some of the different features, some of the obfuscations being used and the exact chain that then in the end leads to installing the info stealer. And it goes without saying, we love malicious emails. Send us malicious emails or upload them via our contact form. That's probably the safest way to bypass all of our mail filters and malware filters well and who else is going to tell you how to bypass their malware filters so you can send them malicious emails and talking about uh, malicious emails and uh, malware xavier found uh, malware in a little bit an unexpected spot and that's uh, files with the extension .ma turns out these files are associated with autodesk uh, maya and autodesk maya is a 3d modeling and animation software you may be familiar with the company autodesk uh, overall the problem here really is that a lot of uh, sophisticated software does implement some form of scripting. And we have, for example, also seen uh, way, way back uh, Autodesk's other problem there, sort of flagship pro uh, product AutoCAD being used uh, to spread malware. Autodesk Maya does parse Python scripts. So by inf inf infiltrating a victim with these .ma files, it may be possible to just simply trick the victim into executing arbitrary code. So this is not really a vulnerability in the product. It's just uh, taking advantage of advertised functionality. Think about it like uh, sending a Word document with a visual basic macro. And then I want to cover sort of three vulnerabilities here in one story because it's somewhat related. There is a Cycel NAS vulnerability, a Huawei router vulnerability, as well as an Asus router vulnerability. Without going into too much detail of the respective vulnerabilities, there are just, well, yet more of sort of these standard IoT-ish vulnerabilities. And uh, I want to reiterate a recommendation I've made before have a monthly router patch day. These are just the vulnerabilities that sort of were made public, were advertised somewhat. Once a month, you should double check your router. Does it need a firmware update? If so, then just apply it. Similar for other sort of IoT-like devices like NASA's, same thing. They do have regular updates, regular vulnerabilities. 
You should, of course, also sign up for any email notifications that the vendor offers, but I find they're not always reliable and easily overlooked as spam as well. And about two weeks ago, I mentioned in this podcast a vulnerability in a VMware's area product. Well, uh, this vulnerability, or at least one of the vulnerabilities uh, being addressed there, it's now actively being exploited. So it's overdue to get your systems patched. Well, and this is it uh, for uh, today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.